Hello differential equation students. In this uh, next set of videos, we will take a look at how do we solve uh, differential equations using Laplace transforms. So in this particular video, we'll take a look at um, how do we, what is the, what is the basic process of uh, solving differential equations using Laplace transform and then we'll take a look at the definition of what it means to be Laplace transform and how does the transformation works and then we'll take a look at some very simple uh, forms of the Laplace transforms and then we'll take a look at uh, you know some basic functions Laplace transforms are basic functions as you see them in here and then we're going to take a look at the Laplace inverse transforms and then how do we make use of this to solve some very simple differential equation. The next set of videos, we'll take a look at, uh, you know, how do you solve very challenging differential equations. All right, let's start. So the idea is that we have been doing all along, that's the same idea, and that is basically the following. <clears throat> so when you have a differential equation, you're gonna have a differential equation in terms of y as a function of t. Y in terms of t, here, y, y, it's a small y, and it's a, a t, so that's a differential equation. You're going to have y in terms of t, so y is a dependent variable, t is an independent variable. Then what we are going to do, using the Laplace transform, we are going to transform this differential equation into an algebraic equation. That is the idea, right? The idea is that we are going to transform this into an algebraic equation. Once it's an algebraic equation, you know the methods that we already know, right? We use a process and things that you know already to solve this algebraic equation, the solution that you're gonna have is y of s. I wanna quickly point one thing here, this is a capital Y, we'll talk about in a moment what we mean by that, and this is the s. So you're gonna have a differential equation in terms of, uh, algebraic equation in terms of y of s. Once you have the solution y of s, then what we are going to do is that we're gonna take a look at the Laplace inverse transform, and then using this uh, Laplace inverse transform, we are going to get the solution y as a function of t, and that's how we get the solution to this differential equation this way right so that is this whole process of getting the solution there so we'll start here do the laplace uh, transform get the algebraic equation and find the solution and do the laplace inverse and then get the solution we have t and that will be the solution to this differential equation that's a process that's similar to whatever that we have been uh, doing earlier all right so let's take a look at the definition of what it means to be a laplace transforms so suppose if you have a function f if you have function f and the function is well defined for any t positive or non negative, then we call this you know, script L, right? We call this script L, script L of f of t. Some books might simply use, you know, L of f of t, and that's okay as well, right? And uh, L of f of t, which is the integral 0 to infinity e to the negative st f of t dt, which by notation, by the way, which will denote it as, which will denote it as the cap f of s right so the laplace of the small f of t is equal to cap f of s so if you take a look what i said earlier here you have a differential equation right that's a small y t and you have an algebraic equation cap y and cap s that's coming off of this so if you have a, a, a function cap f, small f and that variable t after you do the laplace transform after you plug into this laplace transform which is basically this particular integral right then what do you get is the cap f of s. So whenever we say cap f of s, cap f of s is the Laplace transformation of the small f of t. So this uh, f of t transforms into cap f of s by doing the Laplace transform. Remember that. By the way, in general, uh, we will use you know cap the capital letter for a transformed function. So small f of t, if you do, do the Laplace it will give you the cap f, small g will give you the cap g of s, small y of t is going to give you the cap y of s, small x of t is going to give you the cap s of s. And we say it's a, we say it's a Laplace transform, it is named after, after the French mathematician uh, Laplace. And uh, uh, now let's take a look at how do we find the Laplace of the some subclass of some basic functions. <clears throat> let's take a look at how do you find the Laplace of the function one. Uh, here is the Laplace of the function. I'm going to use the definition that you see right here. I'm going to use this definition uh, to do that. So as per the definition you see, Laplace of f of t is equal to 0 to, as you see here, Laplace of f of t is equal to 0 to infinity e to the negative st f of t dt, right? That's what that is. So basically what we are doing is that given f, 
we are going to multiply by the e to the negative st and then we are going to integrate from uh, 0 to infinity that is basically positive real right that's what you're going to do so let's do that for this function l of f l of 1 if i do that let me write down the definition you would see that this is going to be integral from 0 to 1 e to the negative st f of t dt and 0 to infinity i don't know why i'm saying that so it's a 0 to infinity which in this case my f of uh, as you see my f of uh, t is equal to 1 so this is 0 to infinity e to the negative st times 1 dt and you're all experts if i inter if i integrate this one you would agree with me that i am going to have e to the negative st and t is the variable of integration divided by negative s and go and then the limits the lower limit is zero the upper limit is infinity and when we plug this in you would agree with me i'm going to have a negative one over s and then i'm going to have e to the negative infinity minus e to the zero and that's going to give me negative one over s of um, a zero minus one and if i simplify that i am going to have positive one over s so therefore the laplace transform of one the laplace transform of the function one is equal to one over s right keep that in mind <clears throat> all right now let's try to figure out the by the same term let's try to figure out the laplace transform of t how do we do that uh, the same the uh, the formula is the same so let's uh, do that let me use a different color so this is going to be zero to infinity e to the negative st i hope you wouldn't mind simply plug in t right now right and that's all i have now if i again simplify this i'm going to use, i'm going to use the integration by parts right if you use the integration by parts uh, <clears throat> you will see that uh, in this case this is going to be uh, you know negative e to the st times t divided by s and the lower limit is zero upper limit is infinity plus one over s again i'm using the integration by parts right one over s zero to infinity e to the negative st dt and if i simplify this further uh, you would agree with me that uh, this is uh, this would be uh, by the way when i plug in both values by the way you see that i'm going to have a zero when i plug in you know the upper limit to this because of this that's going to be zero when i plug in lower limit because of that that's going to be zero so this is going to i'm going to have you know a negative one over s one over s zero minus zero plus one over s and again by the this is exactly by the way if you recollect this is exactly same as that one and the answer for that is one over s so i'm going to plug this one over s over here when i do that i am going to have one over s coming off of that one coming off of this one right and that simply gets simplified into uh, one over s squared So the Laplace of t is equal to 1 over s squared. Uh, try to find the Laplace of t squared and t cubed and so on. Let me also do one other thing. Uh, how do I find the Laplace of e to the 2t? This is much much simple because by the definition this is integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative st e to the 2t dt, right? And if I simplify this, right, it's e and e, if I simplify this, you agree that I'm going to have integral 0 to infinity e to the <coughs> negative s minus 2 t dt right and if i integrate this you would agree with me that i am going to have uh, e to the negative s minus 2 t divided by s minus 2 with the negative and the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is infinity and again by the same token that we did earlier if I plug the upper limit and the lower limit, I am going to have a negative 1 over s minus 2. When I plug in the upper limit, I am going to have a 0. When I plug in the lower limit, I am going to have minus 1. And if I simplify this, then I am going to have positive 1 over s minus 2. So that's how uh, we get the answer for the e to the 2t. Is there a pattern that you can see? Mm, I want you to see if you can find a pattern. There is a pattern there. And we'll talk about it in a moment. Similarly, I'm going to you know spare the calculations and simplifications. I will uh, let you simply say this. What would be the um, Laplace of sine 3t? It's a long 
uh, integration, right? You have to use the you know integration techniques that you learned in your calculus too. And if you do that, what you're going to have sine three t would be that you're going to have three over s squared plus nine. You will see in a moment of using the formula how it works. What about the cosine? Cosine you're going to have uh, s over s squared plus nine. What about the cosine hyperbolic? And that will be s over uh, s squared minus 9 and again I, I want you to do the integral the integral would be 0 to infinity e to the negative st sine 3t dt if you do the integration this is what you're going to have right and this one you know would be uh, 0 to infinity e to the negative st uh, cosine 3t dt and again if you do that then this is what you're going to get Right. I'll let you do that. Similarly, you can work it out for this one as well. All right. So if you work it out, so what are you going to have? Um, I let you work it out, but there there is a nice pattern. So if you summarize all that we have learned so far, there is a nice pattern, and that pattern is the following: Laplace of one is equal to one over s, and Laplace of n factorial over uh, Laplace of t to the n is going to be. Laplace of t to the n is going to be n factorial over s to the n plus 1. So if I ask you what is the Laplace of t, right? The power is 1, right? The power is 1. So it's going to be 1 factorial over s to the 1 plus 1, which is 1 over s squared. And if you recollect, that's what we got. Uh, that's what we got right here. Laplace of t is equal to 1 over s squared. So now if I ask you what is the Laplace of uh, <coughs> Laplace of uh, t squared and again if I apply this particular formula right here if I apply this particular formula right there you would agree that I am going to have 2 factorial over t to the 2 plus 1 which is 2 over t cubed right and again I can keep on and uh, do that and similarly there is a formula for L of uh, Laplace of sine kt and sine kt would be uh, k over s squared plus k squared e to the at that's nice nice thing over here to the at is 1 over s minus a so if you have an a here that is simply going to be s minus a and that is the reason if we ask you what is the laplace of e to the 2t and here my a is 2 right you can simply say it's 1 over s minus 2 and if you recollect and that's what we had right here as well all right that's what we had right here as well so it works out okay over there and similarly, similarly, if you ask for uh, what is the Laplace of cosine kt, cosine kt, that will be s over s squared plus k squared. Sine hyperbolic would be k over s squared minus k squared. Cosine hyperbolic of the Laplace of the cosine hyperbolic would be s over s squared minus k squared. And that's how we can you know, some find all these. Again, these are integral. You can compute them, and that's how it will come out to be. So if I ask you, for example, you know, what would be the Laplace of, uh, if I ask you what would be the Laplace of sine 5t, the answer would be, you see that this is the k, right? The constant, the constant, the coefficient of the, the variable, right, is the k. So you're going to have 5 over s squared plus 5 squared, right? And for the cosine, uh, it's going to be simply s. So if I ask you what is the Laplace of, uh, what is the Laplace of um, cosine 5t? The answer for that would be s over s squared plus 5 squared, right? The only, I want you to pay, I want you to pay close attention here, the only difference between this and this, right? The sine and the cosine s. For the sine, for the sine, you have a constant, right? For the cosine, you have a s. For the cosine, you have a s right there, right? As you see that. So, you know, another way to think of this would be, you know, it goes kind of the opposite. If it's a sine, you get a constant k, right? Constant k. If it's a cosine, you get a s, right? You get a s, like c for s, and then, you know, k for uh, uh, constant for sine, and s for cosine, right? Kind of like opposite sine and cosine kind of thing. And same thing here, only for the hyperbolic, the only the denominator becomes negative denominator becomes negative but remains it remains a s cosine 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 hyperbolic remain s remains on the top for the sine hyperbolic or the sine constant remains on the top something that you know uh, you can easily remember this 
The good news is the Laplace transform is a, a linear transformation. That's actually a lifesaver. That's a lifesaver. So why it's a lifesaver? Suppose if you ask if I ask you to find this integral, right? If I ask you to find the Laplace, and you have to do a long integral. That's not a big deal. For example, if you take a look at this one, this is a humongous integral, right? If you try to do this in the regular de definition, it's a humongous integral. But thanks to this uh, linearity, linearity property, that Laplace of alpha f of t plus beta g of t is equal to alpha times the Laplace of f of t plus beta times the Laplace of g of t. In other words, alpha times the cap f of s, beta times the cap g of s, right? And that will make us our life much, much easier in figuring these out. So for example, what if this would be? If this would be, as you see in here, this would be as per the formula there, as per the linearity, you would agree with me, I can rewrite this as Laplace of two times one plus three times t, right? Two is a constant, three is a constant, they're like, you know, alpha and beta, and I can rewrite this as two times the Laplace of one plus uh, three times, three times the Laplace of t, right? Three times the Laplace of t, and if you do that, what do you get? So Laplace of one, we know it's one over s, and Laplace of t, we know that is one over s squared, so the answer is as simple as two over s plus 3 over s squared. If you want to do a common denominator, you can say the s squared is the common denominator, and I'm going to have 2s plus 3. And this is much, much, much simpler than going through the entire integral. And let's take a look at the next one. So what would be the Laplace of uh, 3e to the t plus 4 sine 7t? <clears throat> and that will be, again, by the same token that we did earlier, and that will be uh, 3 times Laplace of e to the t plus 4 times Laplace of, you know, sine 7t. And again, we know that from these formulas that we learned right here, from these formulas we learned right here, Laplace of e to the t would be uh, 3 times 1 over s minus 1 plus 4 times, it's a sine, so it's going to be a constant, so it's going to be 7 over s squared plus the square of the 7 and 7, which is 49. <clears throat> and if we simplify this furthermore, this would be 3 over s minus 1 plus 28 over s squared plus 49, right? We can do that again, thanks to the linearity, thanks to this property that helped us in figuring, those, figuring this out easily. But think about this one, right? Let's see how do I do this. Again, so I'm going to use the linearity property right here. If you use the linearity property right here, you would agree with me this would be Laplace of 2020, right? Rather than saying even Laplace of 2020, I'm going to make it even my life easier and say this is 2020 times, <clears throat> 2020 times Laplace of 1 plus uh, 2 times Laplace of e to the 5t. And this is three times Laplace of sine 2t. And this is uh, four times Laplace of cosine 11t. And uh, plus six times, plus six times Laplace of cosine hyperbolic 7t, right? And then now we can use this individually. If we use this individually, let's see what do we have. If you use the Laplace individually, then you're going to have this is 20, 20 times the Laplace of 1 is 1 over s, plus 2 times the Laplace of L, uh, e to the 5t would be 1 over s minus 5, plus 3 times the Laplace of sine 2t would be, it's a sine, so it's going to be a constant on the top, which is the 2 divided by, uh, s squared plus 2 squared which is 4 plus 4 times the Laplace, Laplace of cosine. Cosine means I'm going to have s on the top divided by s squared plus 11 squared which is 121 plus now I have a cosine hyperbolic so it's going to be 6 times and that would be cosine so I'm going to have s on the top divided by s squared plus 49 and that's it. Again I'll let you simplify this if you simplify this, you're going to have you know, 20, 20 over s, 2 over s minus 5, 6 over s squared plus 4, plus 4s over s squared uh, 
plus 121 plus 6s over s squared plus 49 you can simplify that now you don't have to really do the common denominator but if you want to do a common denominator just for a fun you can do that as well all right i will stop this uh, video in the, at this place we will do the uh, in the next video we'll talk a little, we'll take a look at how does the laplace inverse works so this is basically the inverse process right so you know laplace of one is equal to one over s right so the laplace inverse of one over s would be one that's what we mean by laplace inverse right laplace of t is equal to one over s squared so laplace inverse of one over s squared would be t so it's a backward process laplace of you know e to the negative three is one over s plus three so laplace inverse of one over s plus three would be e to the negative three t so we'll talk about this again in detail in the next video we'll stop it right here